Okie dokie. Setting up to do some videos so that, um, this is some political crap going on and it's just making me sick with all the misinformation. And I don't know how many of you subscribe to anybody's channel that's in the firearms. Um, I haven't done a lot video wise on firearms most of the ones i've done were personal and specifically for someone and so they're not listed as public and i'm not going to make them public but what i'm getting ready to do is share some information with those of you so that when you're listening to people talk or listening to the news you will know who's lying to you and using general terms in a dangerous fashion or not. And I'm telling you these things while I'm working on the snake skin for the, uh, the knife handle. Now, it's flat. You can hear it's kind of crinkly because I washed and dried it and washed and dried it. And now I'm starting to soak it with oil. And as it gets soaked with oil, you know, you hold it up to the light, it's almost transparent. You almost can't see in the shades at all, but holding it down here, you can see that, you know, if you know snakes, you know it's a rattler. So, this is the handle with the first, with the first layer on it. Now, the epoxy makes it clear, and this is dark here. This is the center line or that part of the snake's back. Now, once this is oiled up, it'll be like leather, and it's going to be wrapped around this handle in such a fashion like this but it won't be much overlap but it'll be similar to that and then that'll be done I'll put the knife back together and done and I will take the rest of it and uh, where's the sheath at? I will take the rest of it and put it on the sheath like so and then I'll stitch it and that'll be it and trim off the excess. It's really not hard. The hard part is killing the snake without shooting him with a shotgun. <laughs> You're gonna kill a rattlesnake with a single bullet to the head. You gotta be a good damn shot. That's number one. <laughs> as good as I am, most times they're moving, so I don't use um, guns on rattlesnakes. I use a knife. But it's like I mentioned in the first rattlesnake skin video. I haven't hunted any of them this year because I don't know if my speed is down. Because when you're going to take on a rattlesnake with a knife, you know, you got to have on your high heel sneakers, <laughs> your five inch spectator pumps, a mini skirt, tight draws, and a three tit bra because it's game on, you know, because that snake don't care what your <laughs> agenda is. And with me, you know, I, it's just something that I do. I mean, I eat them, and I don't waste nothing. You know, my granddad's family was Native American, and, you know, I grew up in the country, and this is just something we did. So, you know, I don't expect rattlesnake to be your thing. But these guys, we ready to do a video on these guys to straighten people up so that you guys absolutely, without a doubt, know what the truth is about the types of weapons, the terms being used by politicians and people on TV who want you to either become a gun nut or afraid of guns. And I'm going to get rid of all of that. You're going to know what the truth is because if you show what I'm talking about to any vet, they're going to say yes, no, or maybe. Maybe equals no because that means they don't know. It ain't going to be hard to do because I've been doing this all my life. All my life. I didn't start this yesterday and I ain't going to quit tomorrow. You know, it's part of who I am. So, with that said, I'm done with the first course of oil in the skin. When you're going to use the skin for something, you got to decide what consistency you want, whether you want it dry and hard or soft and flexible and I want mine soft and flexible because I'm gonna use it like leather so now it's making it soft again after it's been clean and dried and actually to get it flat like this after I got done 
I just washed it, rinsed it, and wrapped it around this paper towel core. Which is why it's got that little curve to it. But um, in about two hours and two or three more coatings of oil, it'll be soft enough to wrap, and I'll continue on. And that's that on the snake skin. So let me shut this off and separate it so that I can do these guys over here and let you know what's really happening. Peace. Okay, guys. You got politicians, you got news, you got the kids in Florida, you got pissed off people everywhere. And they're pissed off about the AR-15. Let me tell you something. First and foremost, the people who are doing these things with the AR-15, they're doing it because it's a fashionable crime, okay? And I say that because there are hundreds of rifles and handguns out there that do the same thing that look nothing like a military rifle. The AR-15 is not the problem. Society's view of what's cool, etc., is the problem. So, what I'm gonna do first is get into some technical things. This is a 22 caliber round from what most people would call a squirrel rifle because people who are good shots don't hunt small animals with a shotgun because you blow it all to hell and you leave pellets in it for people to spit out and break teeth on. It's a 20 boot caliber round. Now, a good shot will use this to bark a squirrel. Barking a squirrel means to hit the limb under him and showering him with splinters, stunning him and he falls to the ground. In which case you put him out of his misery by being down there waiting on him to fall. And you actually didn't shoot him at all. Now in the case of rabbits, my grandfather taught me to hunt rabbits. And in 1960, he would give me three rounds on a weekend. One of them had to put something on the table and I could do what I wanted with the other two. But that was it. At the age of eight years old, in 1962, Camp Wainoa, and YMC keeps good records, especially when it comes to firearms. I won my first rifle competition. I put three of these through the hole the size of a diamond, 100 yards. It was the beginning of what I was to become in life because I'm a natural. I love to hunt, but I don't love to hunt so much just to go out killing. I never shot an animal that I didn't eat with the exceptions of possums getting too close to the house, stuff like that or groundhog. Now, groundhogs, I shot indiscriminately in the garden, but, you know, they either went in the pot or in the deep freezer. So, you know, like I said, I'm a country guy. Oh, I don't mean to put that over there. Now, that's a 22 caliber round, okay? The AR-15 is a 22 caliber round. This is a 20 round or 19 round mag from an AR-15. Okay, the AR-15, the so-called, fingers up, assault rifle. Now, let's find something out. How big and how deadly is the AR-15? Oh man, don't tell me battery dead. It looks like it. Yep, battery's dead, so we're gonna have to do this manually, which is not a problem. Do I have one with a dial? Yeah, there we go. Okay, let me zero this puppy out. It's already zeroed. Let me see if I can. Okay, so we put this on here and we check the diameter. I need my glasses, or at least a pair of glasses. Hold on, pause this, go get some glasses. Okay, I'm back. I got some glasses. So, we put this on the caliper and it shows 0.22, 22 caliber. So, let's put the AR-15 round down and pick up the 22 caliber round from my little squirrel rifle. 
Oh, gee, they're the same, 0.22. When Obama was elected to office, there was a run on guns. 90% of the gun shops in America, shells were empty because everybody had said, President Obama's going to take your guns. No president can take your guns. He can't do it by executive action. No president, okay? So get over yourself. If you want a reason to hate a man you don't understand or don't know, you're going to find something else. President can't take guns. That's number one. If you ask somebody in the military who is now a civilian why you have the Second Amendment, it is to ensure that the civilian can rise up against the government if the government gets out of control, out of hand. Now, with that said, if the civilians are running around with slingshots and rocks like the Palestinians, they're going to get what the Israelis did to them. They're going to blow their asses up, which is what will happen to us. You know, because that's it. That's that. The only reason our schools are not protected is because we don't protect them. We spend more money on a convict's education and care than we do on our children. That's our fault. Because if we start blowing up the phones, them fools in Washington will get the message. Okay? And I don't, nobody, I don't want to hear nobody talking about, oh, you're a Democrat, or I don't want to hear nobody talking about, you're a Republican. I'm a veteran. Okay? I'm a volunteer veteran. As my uncle was as three of his uncles were, my grandmother's brothers, as I am, as my brother, a Marine Corps person, was. We're all vets, we're all volunteers, even during the draft. There was nobody in my family drafted. Every member of my family, cousins included, that went to the military joined. And there was a bunch of us. There were 50, more than 50 males in my generation and 45 of us volunteered for the military and this is during the draft so I don't want to hear that political bullshit now let's get back to business here when the gun thing started when Obama was elected guns flew off the shelves ammunition flew off the shelves okay this round is the same diameter as this round this round went up in price tenfold. You could buy a hundred of these for a couple of dollars back then. Ain't no more of them days because because of the diameter of this, people bought these up to load in these cases because you couldn't find them. You couldn't find them. The price of ammunition went through the roof. Obama's going to take your guns. Well, he didn't take your guns. And he said so. He said, I ain't taking your guns. He said, you need them. He said, two things people cling to when times get troubled in this country, their guns and their religion. He was right. But people chastised him for it, but he's right. Because two things you do when shit get bad. You pray, and when people act their ass, you get your gun. <laughs> so, I mean, I don't know why people want to get mad about somebody saying something that's correct. But people hate in this country because they don't like and they don't know why they don't like. They just don't like and they use the term liberals and this is and that, which makes me sick because all of it is un-American. All of it is un-American. Now, let's get back to this again. The people on the news want you to think that the AR-15, which a lot of them look like this, but that's not an AR. A lot of them look like that. It's a black rifle, so it's scary as hell. But, you know, the idea is that it's the boogeyman. Well, this magazine here fits in the most popular rifle in this country. And it's a 22 long rifle magazine. It's got 40 rounds in it. Okay? It's got 40 rounds in it. It's a CMF product from Mitchell Arms Incorporated. It fits the Ruger 1022, which is a 22 caliber semi-automatic rifle. It's been around probably as long as the AR-15, which is a derivative or civilian version of the M16. Now, Let's get down to terminology. 
Let me put this back. This magazine fits in a semi-automatic rifle, meaning one press of the trigger fires one round. If you hold the trigger down, it ain't going to matter. It's going to, you pull the trigger and hold it, it's going to fire one round. It's going to sit there and look at you like you're stupid. Why are you holding me? Okay. AR-15 is not an assault rifle. If you want to label an assault rifle because somebody used it in assault, well, a slingshot becomes an assault rifle if you attack some, if you assault somebody with it. So th there, there's that myth is busted. An assault rifle, now let me pick this up so I can show you some things. There's a selector switch here. It says safe. It says fire. You push it down, it fires. You pull it up, it says safe. On an automatic rifle, there's a couple other things going on. Safe is in the middle. Down is semi-automatic, one round, one round at a time. You pull it back, you charge it, it's got a round in the pipe. You pull the trigger, and one round will fire. Now, you put a magazine in this thing, and you got it set in the center on safe, you can't pull the charging arm back when it's set on safe because it blocks that. That's what stops it from firing. Okay? Now, so, if this was an AK-47 and you had a round in here, you pull the charging arm back and put a round in there and you pull the trigger. If this was an AK-47, it would keep firing until it was empty. That's an assault weapon, people. An assault weapon is a machine gun. It requires a class three license. You have to give them the booty hole size of your firstborn, your mama's vaginal size, your daddy's inside penal diameter to get that permit. And or be law enforcement or ex-military. There's a whole lot of stuff required to get what they're calling an assault weapon. These are not assault rifles. They just look bad because these people have had these since back in the 40s and 50s. And for my money, a 22 long rifle is probably the most dangerous weapon on the planet because it's not very loud. You can silence it with a little more than a balloon and it'll kill out to 300 yards. And if you know your rifle, it is one of the most accurate rifles ever made. After that, the only changes made to firearms were making these cases bigger. Okay? Making these cases bigger. Now, the AR-15 and this have a lot in common. This is the civilian version. You see all this dust? I only mess with this thing once a year. I clean it up, I take it out, I fire it, I clean it again, and I put it away. This is a MAK-90 Sportster. It is the civilian variant of AK-47. If you know somebody who has anything similar to this and they're saying, I got an AK-47, one of two things is happening. Either they have a class three permit or they're a felon. And they're gonna go to prison if they get caught with an AK-47. And you won't ever see them again because they'll be in prison probably throughout the duration of their life because if they got an AK-47 and it's not legally theirs they're going to be in jail for a whole lot of other shit besides just possession of that weapon and the reason I know that is because I have that permit okay I am the kind of person that people bring a gun to when they don't know what to do with it they want to get rid of it they'll bring it to me or they'll bring it to one of my law enforcement buddies the nicest pistols I have were gifts from law enforcement officers for services rendered and things I do. I am not a knucklehead clown or a fool and I don't deal in nothing but the truth. And I don't want you guys on my channel making politically motivated decisions without knowing what the truth is. You can't 
go buy a machine gun. If you want a machine gun, it's going to take you about 18 months to get it. Because stuff is, you know, you used to get it in about a year, six months to a year. Now it takes a lot longer than that. And you and your family have to be squeaky clean. And with all this other stupid stuff going on, this is one of them times where it probably ain't worth it to bother. Okay? It really ain't worth it. The time and the trouble. You know, then you got modifications, you know, bump stocks. But, you know, outlawing bump stocks ain't going to help you because you can do the same thing with rubber bands. And if you think I'm lying, get on YouTube and look for automatic conversion with rubber bands on an AR-15 or AK-47. And you'll see a guy taking rubs, rubber bands around a magazine in the front stock and grrr, just like he had a selector switch on a C3 weapon. So when you hear people talking about assault rifles, they're doing it and calling them assault rifles to make you nervous, to scare you, to keep you misinformed and off balance. You can't go to the gun shop and just buy an assault rifle. You ain't going to buy no assault rifle with a three-day waiting period. It's going to take you three days to fill out the initial paperwork if you want one. If you want one. So do your homework, guys. Y'all know how I am. Y'all know how I am. I don't want you running around in the world not knowing. Because that's how they take advantage of it. It's like I used to say about people that can't read. If you can't read, people will take advantage of you till the last drop of blood runs out of your body. Because if you can't read, you don't know what they're showing you. But I'm going to tell you. And I'm not going to text it to you in a written word. I'm going to show you. The AR-15 is no more dangerous than this Marlin squirrel rifle. The only difference is that the AR-15 will penetrate parts of buildings but in a point-to-point -point shoot, it's the same weapon. The difference between the projectile out of this 22 rifle and the AR-15 is not a lot. That's why they made it. They designed this because of what this does. They made this because of what this does. It's not vice versa. This has been around a lot longer than this. Okay, this has been around a lot longer. Don't take my word for it. I want you to fact check, look it up, become a historian, because when you do, people won't be able to lie to you and fool you. You're going to know. And the reason I'm doing this video is because, you know, on MS, I think it was MSNBC, guy was talking about, in the 1980s, the military was considering the AR-15 for use with the American military. Well, the American military had been using what we call the M-16 since back in the late, I think it's late 50s or early 60s. The M-16 been around a long time, and he got it back asswards. Back Asswards, 1980? Are you kidding me? The, the AR-15 was designed for civilian use. It is a variant of the M16, which is an assault rifle or machine gun. Assault rifle, equal sign, machine gun. Okay? These are not machine guns. They're not assault rifles. And the only difference between the, M, the, M, the AR-15s, the MAK-90s, which this is, and that 22 caliber rifle, the only difference in them is how they look. They do the same thing. You can put a magazine in them and get one round per pull of the trigger. Assault rifles are military weapons. See, that's why they lose in court. 
And sadly, the people selling you this bullshit on TV, they know they're just selling bullshit. They know, you're not gonna, they know they're not going to win in court because they go in there talking assault rifle and the judge already knows and it's all set up. It's all set up already to fail. They can't take them away because they're not assault rifles. They were assault rifles. We wouldn't have them in the first damn place. Okay. You guys see me in my videos a lot of times. I got this thing around my neck, this blue lanyard with a card hanging off of it. That's a piece of identification. Hey, baby boy. You coming here to see what's happening? You going to stand up and say hi? Come here. Say hi to your folks. Come on. Come on. No? You looking for something to see? Oh, you just want five? You just want five? Come on. Yeah, say hi to your folks. Yeah. You know? Yeah, man, y'all, y'all, get away from them TVs, man. Do open a book. Do some studying. Because this sugar-coated bullshit I see on TV selling folks noise and lies, it's done got to be downright dangerous on the street because of it. The Black Lives Matter kids are pissed off because everybody's paying so much attention to the white kids in Florida. Well, they wasn't all white. And they didn't die because of police brutality. They died because of one somebody. One somebody. But you know what? All lives matter. And we should have fixed this shit years ago. But until we start kicking kids in the ass when they fuck up when they're little. Which you're not legally allowed to do anymore. And I broke the law raising my kids. Because when they messed up, I kicked a natural ass. The girls as well as the boys. I did not discriminate on where my foot went when it was asshole finding time. And my daughters will tell you that. And both of them six foot tall. So. If it's cute when they're little. When they toss your ass in the nursing home. Because you taught them to be independent. And not care about nothing but their damn self. Well you got what you paid for. But don't let nobody sell you a bill of fucking goods. And be careful how you talk to people you don't know. Because like I say all the time, you never know who you talk to. I'm nice to everybody and I walk away. Because don't nobody want to grab me. You don't want to grab me. You don't want to grab me, turn around. You don't want to stand in my airspace and run your fucking mouth. And all this shit that people take for granted, you don't want to do that with me because I don't come from that school. I come from a school where when we disagreed, we duked it out and we was friends when we got done. All these coward-ass motherfuckers running around here treating people bad and running their mouth and, and driving by and shooting us. Really? Know what's going on, people. Take them rose-colored glasses off and read your mail. And when you get done reading it, read it again. Don't let nobody sell you no bullshit. Because it's just too much of it going around. If you think I don't mean what I say, ask Wally. Ask him. Wally is my go-to. We had us uh, some serious conversations. Trust me when I tell you, I love the ground that man walk on. He's a lot younger than me. He'd be, he's not much older than my children, but he's solid. He's a hard-working, studious person. People don't pay him no mind because he don't sound like the so-called smart guy. Y'all better read the mail and look around you and get into some serious hugs, thank yous, appreciate yous, and God bless you because you're going to need it. You're going to need it. So know what they selling you. These are not assault rifles. The last one I had I got rid of years ago. I didn't even turn it in law enforcement. I sawed it up. Because I knew I didn't need it. I didn't want it getting back out there. Most of the people who are qualified to have them, I'd probably say 99% are okay people but you know you got hate groups out there and in some of these hate groups you have people who are not criminals and because they are not criminals they can buy some ugly stuff they can buy some ugly stuff 
I'm not going to tell you why I have it like I do, but I will tell you that before 2008, I really didn't. Now, other than personal, my personal protection, I really didn't have it like this because I didn't want to be bothered because it reminded me too much of the military. But something happened to me and my family in 2008, and it changed all that, and I ain't going back because they ain't got rid of them assholes, so my shit ain't going nowhere. When they get rid of them, I'll get rid of it. Not until, not before. Do your homework, people. Papa Phil wants you to be okay. Papa Phil wants you to know what's going on. And if you really don't understand it and you want a personal conversation, ask me for my number. I'll give it to you. I've been on the internet since 1995. I ain't scared of my phone number. And I ain't scared of this world. I've already been there, so it really don't mean shit to me. But if you're watching and listening to my channel, I appreciate you. I want you to know what time it is. And if you think I'm lying about these weapons and about what's going on, find you a vet and ask them. If they tell you one word different, I'll eat it. And I've been building guns for 35 years. 35 years, okay? So, there you have it, folks. Don't listen to them verbatim. It's like, uh, what's that girl, Rachel Maddow? She said, don't listen to what they say. Watch what they do. Because it don't match. It don't match. We ain't got no business having school shootings. The rest of the planet laughing at us. It's not because we have guns. It's because we don't have discipline and training in our homes. This shit starts in the beginning. It starts in the house. If you don't get them straight while they're growing up, when they get grown, they're going to be idiots and stuck on stupid. So, let me tell you what I told the police when they came out and told me I couldn't whip my girl's ass when they messed up. I said, well, then you pack that shit up and you raise them. Because if they live here and I got to work and risk my life protecting them and work to put food on the table to feed them, when they fuck up, I'm going to kick their ass. Now, choose. They left without the kids. And the social worker didn't have nothing to say because she damn sure wasn't getting ready to feed my kids because my girls was as tall as me. They both over six foot and they eat like me, so she couldn't afford to feed them. So, there you have it. Reality checks don't bounce. God bless you. If you made it to the end of this one, you got thick skin and you need it. And I appreciate you. And I don't give a shit what color you are, where you come from. You walk around up under that flag. Get a grip. Do some reading. I'm telling you to go read. I'm telling you to go find out if I'm lying. I'm not telling you to just believe me. I'm telling you to go check it out so that you know. And when you know what the truth is, you don't have to worry about somebody believing something. I don't give a shit what people believe because if they knew, they wouldn't have to worry about believe because it becomes a matter of knowledge and fact. But, well, I believe that I'm bulletproof because they said, well, I know that I'm not bulletproof, so you got to go. There you have it, brothers. God bless you. Thanks for watching. And don't consider this overkill until you don't watch some more of these videos where these guys are standing in their back room of their house and they got wall-to-wall -wall guns for what the hell ever reason is beyond me because, you know, if I have to leave out of here on the run because the world went to shit, I ain't going to take but two. I'm going to take one for food, one for protection, and the rest of them will be laying here cut up for whoever to find for parts because I ain't even going to be trying to pack them all out of here. I'm hoping I'm dead and gone for the world turning to shit because I really don't want to see it happen. You know, I got more faith in people than that. And it's going to be a shame to be disappointed. Ain't that right, Bubba? That's right, Dad, because we, we had too much fun, and, 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 and we like people too much, and, 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 and we don't want people, I, and besides, I can't be a kitty in a dog suit if people act stupid, and then I can't play all the time. Hey, come here. Come here. I got your tail. 
Huh? How many dogs you grab their tail and they won't stop wagging it? That's right. God bless you guys. Thanks for watching. Be careful out there. Watch some videos, know some truth. You know, read. Go to the library, get a book. This internet's getting stupid. You want to know what the law is? Look the law up. <laughs> Don't ask somebody that might not know. <laughs> My next door neighbor's a friggin' judge, and I taught him how to shoot. <laughs> you know, there's no judge in this country that's not carrying a gun, you know. I chose his weapons for him and taught him to shoot, so <laughs> I got a clue, okay? All you got to do to get a clue is read, study. Read and study. It's time. God bless you. Peace.